We are the Muslim Ummah And each day that goes by The harder we try In gratitude we pray to Allah Chosen as part of the best of mankind We spread the word of Islam Each man and each hour In all of his power Each flower, each tree Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And I welcome you back to episode number 9 Of our exciting journey through the Islamic And in this case, Ottoman heritage of Europe why do I say this case? Now, last episode and this episode will focus on the Balkan Peninsula, the Balkan countries, which are numerous. Now, I'm Dr. Steph Keris Abu Yasser, and I have focused pretty much on the Ottoman heritage of our continent, Europe. And I've written the book, which is called Europe's Forgotten Ottoman Heritage, which basically is focusing on indeed our forgotten Ottoman heritage in Greece, pretty much on my home country, Greece. Now, I would like to go a little bit away from Greece now. We discussed some issues in the past and would like to take a closer look after we saw what happened to Albania, or at least we got a little bit of an idea of Albania in the last episode. I would like now to move to its neighbors. And there are plenty of them, because ex-Yugoslavia, or Yugoslavia as it used to be called before this vast country. This country is broken totally into six different parts, at least six different countries. Not all recognized, or not all recognized by the world, and definitely not all recognized by the Serbs. Now Yugoslavia used to be a country actually run by the Serbs. It was actually a bigger Serbia. Yugoslavia was nothing else but the central government being in Belgrade. Belgrade is the capital of Serbia nowadays. So basically the Serbs were the ones who had might and power in that nation and during the time of uh, Tito, who was the communist uh, ruler of, the, of the, that time Yugoslavia. And after the breakup, of course, everybody... The first, first people did not know what to do because they did not know how to deal with their independence. And we saw with Albania. Albania, although it was not part of the Yugoslavia, but it was still, a w in a way, it was heavily connected to the Soviet Union that time. Nowadays, Russia, Soviet Union, Communist Soviet Union, of course, that time. Yugoslavia was also very close to the Soviets, but not on the same level like Albania. Albania was very strict Stalinist. Yugoslavia still allowed its people to travel and many Yugoslavian people of that time traveled but mainly for reasons of work they went actually as guest workers mainly to Germany. Many others of them are in Australia. Australia is a very big community of Yugoslavian people. Some of them Bosnians, some of them Serbs, some of them Kosovo, Ko Kosovo Kosovarians and this all this all indicates, it shows how actually the, 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 the structure of Yugoslavia was at that time. Um, there was not a lot to do in Yugoslavia at the time. There was not a lot of work, unfortunately, so people had to leave. Nowadays, Yugoslavia. Now, let's take a look again at the map, just to get a clear idea of what we are talking about. Again, the Balkan, the Balkan Peninsula. Italy, I'm sure that most of you recognize Italy, the boot. Portugal, Spain, France, Italy. Now, next to Italy, you can see hopefully Slovenia, Croatia, the green country. Slovenia, the red-orange one. Next to this one, Croatia, the green one. And the blue one is Bosnia-Herzegovina. Next to Bosnia-Herzegovina, we see Serbia, the yellow country. Serbia, which borders with Romania, Bulgaria, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, Montenegro, Kosovo, and Bosnia. Now, Serbia, as I said before, used to be the main country, used to be the Serbs, used to be the rulers of Yugoslavia, let's put it that way, rulers. They used to be the main leaders of the Yugoslav Republic of the regime that time. So now, 
we're talking about independent countries and we're talking about Islamic heritage. Now, all these countries, except Slovenia and Croatia in a, in a, in a lesser extent, they all have Islamic and Ottoman, mainly Ottoman heritage. And if we look at Bosnia, we have all heard, unfortunately, about the war of Bosnia. That's the only thing we, I'm sure that most of the Muslims in the world is the only thing they know about Bosnia. They know that there has been a war. What exactly happened, nobody really knows, so not many. Not many. Now, when the war was exactly, a very small percentage of the Muslims in the world can tell us this. Now, what exactly happened, again, even a smaller percentage can tell us this. Serbia, Bosnia, Montenegro, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, and Kosovo in the end, they all have come out of this Yugoslavia. And most of them have, if not a majority Muslims, like Albania has one majority Muslim, uh, Kosovo has actually a majority Muslim Albanian population. Kosovo, which is trying to be recognized as an independent country. Some of the Western countries have recognized Kosovo and is since 2008 actually independent. But Serbia does not recognize Kosovo as being an independent country for the reason that I mentioned some episodes ago. I hope you remember when Sultan Murat, who was the third sultan, who was the only the first sultan who actually was killed on the battlefield in Kosovo. In Kosovo. And it's in Kosovo where we can find his in interior organs which, which are bur buried actually in Kosovo. He himself is buried in Turkey, but the, there's still a tomb which we can still find in, in, in Kosovo. So Kosovo plays an important role for the psyche and for the ego of the Serbs because that's where they killed Sultan Murat. So imagine, imagine the psyche of these people they say, okay, as much as they hate the Turks, at least they had some kind of victory to, to show off, and that's what they still want to keep. That's why they want to keep Kosovo. It's a psychological thing why they want to keep Kosovo. It's not economic at all. It has no economic reason. It is all psychology which is behind it, okay? Historic reasons. Do you understand what's happening on the Balkans now? I'm talking about a mess. And that's, what I'm, that's exactly what the Balkan is at the moment. Now, the... The Serbs, who would like to keep Kosovo still, have to let it go once because Kosovo has been recognized by some countries already since 2008. It is an independent country. Montenegro, Montenegro, which is, the, which is the small country above Albania, if you look again on the map, we can find Montenegro in brown, a brown country above Albania, between Bosnia and Herzegovina and Albania. Bosnia and Herzegovina is the blue country in the north of Montenegro to the west of Serbia. So Serbia had to let go of Montenegro and Kosovo as well. These countries, Montenegro, Kosovo, have a very large minority of Muslims. In the case of Kosovo, we can actually even say it's a majority of Muslims, most of them Albanians. Bosnia-Herzegovina is a country which actually, sadly, has made news, as we know. But it's, it's not a majority Muslim country. Uh, we, are to, we, are, we probably, statistics say between 40 and 45 percent of Bosnian, of people living in Bosnia are actually Muslims. 40 to 45 percent, not more. Now, the rest are Serbs who are living in their own republic in the north of uh, Bosnia. There is an own republic, Republika Serbska, as it's called, which is a, a Serbian republic basically given to the Serbs. And they, most of them, of course, are Orthodox Christians. Next to this one, Bosnia-Herzegovina is actually divided into two. As you can hear the name, the name is Bosnia-Herzegovina. Herzegovina is the, the, the south side of Bosnia, of the country, and Bosnia is the north one. So basically, we're talking about a country which has so-called become independent as one country for the Muslims, but actually it's not a country for the Muslims, because it's just 40 to 45 percent Muslims who are living in the, in the area where, Muslim, where, where, where the Bosnians live. And in the north, within Bosnia-Herzegovina, there's a, the Republika Serbska, the Serbian Republic of the Serbs who are independent, living within this Bosnia-Herzegovina as a country. Now, it, it's, it's a crazy situation, isn't it? It's a very crazy situation. 
Croatia got its own country, the Croats got their country, the, Slovenes, the Slovenians got their country, the Serbs got their country, Montenegro and Kosovo is independent now, but Bosnia is still a country divided actually by three. It's still a country divided into three different parts. The Muslims of ex-Yugoslavia still don't have a country. These Muslims who live in Bosnia are called Bosniaks. Now, what is happening in the Balkan? In order not to call them Turks, they call them Bosniaks. But basically, Bosniaks is nothing else but Slavic people, and don't forget the name Yugoslavia. Why was it called Yugoslavia? It was called Yugoslavia because these were Slavic tribes living there in these areas. The Bulgarian people actually, some of them are Slavs, and some of them were Asian people who came from Central Asia to Bulgaria. Okay, a very important point, a very important point. And if you look at the Slavic people, by the way, the word Slav is the, the, the root word of the word slave comes from Slav. Because they used to be the slaves of the Greeks, actually, of the ancient Greeks. In ancient times, in ancient times, they would love to have Slavic people, you know, as their slaves, okay, at homes in ancient Athens or in, 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 ancient, in, the, in, in ancient Greece, during the time of ancient Greece. The Romans as well. Now, these Slavs got the name because of that, all right? So now, if we look at Bulgaria, Bulgaria is a country which is originally mixed of Slavic and Asian tribes. And Bulgaria has nowadays 12 to 13 percent Muslims. 12 to 13 percent Muslims. These Muslims, they used even to be more. Many of them had to leave the country due to the tensions that were in this country in the 80s and the 90s. And they, many of them went to Turkey, some came back, but it indicates already Bulgarian people, like Serbs, by the way, Bulgarians, the Bulgarian Christians are also Orthodox people, and I think it should make you feel, how come that all Orthodox people have such a hatred towards Islam? You know, suddenly we have the Serbs hating the Muslims, hating their own Slavic people, call them Bosniaks in order to distinguish them, to make them different from them ethnically. Ethnically, there is no difference between a Bosniak and a Serb. Ethnically, there is no difference at all. The only difference is that the Bosniak actually is a Muslim, whereas a Serb is, a, is an Orthodox Christian. So ethnically, there is no difference. But they are trying to make us believe now that there, is, there are three, three ethnic, ethnic, ethnic peoples living in, 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 in Serbia, or in Bosnia, sorry. This is not true. It's another myth that we are living with now at this very moment. So please wake up. At this moment, they're making us believe that Bosnia is divided into three different, different ethnic, ethnic peoples. It's not correct. It's not true. These are all the same Slavic people. They all speak the same language. The difference is that one is Orthodox, the other one is Catholic, and the other one is Muslim. Anyway, inshallah, after the break, we will go deeper into the issue of Bosnia, especially, inshallah. Now, I hope to see you soon back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Chosen as part of the best of mankind. We spread the word of Islam. Why does Islam say cover the you know what is the purpose of our lives? When you go to the grave, the Believer will be asked three questions. How many, you know, destruction of marriages, of society, of family ties have come because of statements made on someone's tongue by what someone has said. What Sharia really is, think about it. We want you to think about it. Think about life. Think about your purpose in life. Think about the Creator of this earth we live in. Think about how you should worship this creator and who this creator is. That's our aim behind this show here on Huda TV. Let's focus on what Islam itself says as a legal Islamic religious system. Of the best of mankind, 
we spread the word of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back again to the second part of episode number nine. We are focusing pretty much on the, on the Balkan Peninsula today and we have said a lot of things. The history of the development actually of Yugoslavia a lot and we haven't really gone too much into each country and I cannot, we, the time doesn't allow unfortunately to go into each one of these countries. But just to give you a very general idea as we spoke about, we spoke about the breakup of Yugoslavia. It has become basically six countries nowadays. All these countries except Slovenia and Croatia in a lesser extent have Muslim minorities. In the case of Kosovo again, we're talking about Albanian, mainly Albanian, we can say majority Muslims actually. Um, Bosnia now, I would like to show you some of the photos again of Bosnia when I had the chance to go and visit Bosnia, mashallah, after the war. And there is still a lot of, there are still a lot of sad reminders of the Bosnian war. But let's first of all enjoy nature in Bosnia and let's see what a beautiful country is actually there to be discovered. And indeed, tourism, inshallah, I'm very, very sure, tourism will flourish in that country too if they do it right. The problem with Bosnia is it is a landlocked country and has just 20 kilometers of, of, of beach, just 20 kilometers. Uh, so we are hoping that for the Bosnian sake, inshallah, that it, tourism will take off. It is hopefully a good source of income for them too, inshallah. Now, so the nature in Bosnia is, is really breathtaking. Very mountainous country again, like um, Albania. In general, the, the, the Balkan Peninsula is very mountainous. Now, again, we can see mountains and fresh water, which you can indeed drink, mashallah. Um, so it is, it is beautiful. I left the slides to, for you to enjoy them. Just enjoy the nature and enjoy Bosnia as it actually is. Now, this is one of the mosques again in Sarajevo. The mosque has an Ottoman structure, but it's a newer one. This one is a newer one. It is not an Ottoman mosque. It is not an Ottoman mosque, but it, um, it, it, it still carries the Ottoman architecture because this is what is prevalent in, 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 the, in the Balkan Peninsula. So this mosque has been renovated, or some of them even have been basically rebuilt after the war. Many of the mosques were destroyed during the war, which was between 1992 and 1995 simply because of the hatred that the Serbs felt against the so-called Turks, as they call them, as we said, the Muslims, they keep calling them Turks. Now, this is the inside of the mosque. Now, this is a very new mosque, as you can see here now again, very modern feature. And this is again a renovated mosque, the same place there used to be an older Ottoman building, Ottoman structure, still the Ottoman architecture is there, but again, renovated as after the war, a lot of money has gone into rebuilding these mosques. Now, this is a sad reminder here. As I said before, we will be able to see, unfortunately, many reminders of the Bosnian war. Still, Bosnia is suffering under the war, under the, under the, the results of uh, the Bosnian war, which finished in, officially in 1995. And you can see these kind of houses and structures within the, within the, 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 the cities. Uh, Sarajevo, of course, especially, you will find these kind of buildings and structures destroyed, as you can see, unfortunately. And um, due to the economic hardship that they have, they cannot rebuild everything. Something very important to know in case you won't ever would like to go and visit Sarajevo, there is a museum tunnel, a museum tunnel of Sarajevo, which was the tunnel that was actually used underground by the Muslims during the time of the siege of Sarajevo in 19, between 1992 and 1995, where they still had the chance to get under the tunnel through to Sarajevo city to get their food and uh, everything that was necessary, of course, to survive. 
So it has become a museum and we had the chance to go and visit it and it is really interesting to go and see. Now, this one here tells you a little bit about the story of Sarajevo. Sarajevo surrounded city 1992 to 1995. Sarajevo as a capital, of course, had to suffer a lot. There was a four-year siege, okay, of Sarajevo and over 11,000 people were killed during that time. There's the museum. You can find quite some pieces of art there. Now, um, this again is a sad reminder in Sarajevo again, the old blocks which have been heavily um, uh, bombarded by the Serbs. Now, and here we see a little bit, still the market atmosphere is there, as it used to be in the Ottoman time. Now, this is a, a new mosque again, King Fahd. And again, you see how, how mountainous and hilly the country is, exactly like Albania, in many ways like Albania. That's Sarajevo. And this is, of course, another very sad reminder. These are the people who died during the war, who are buried here in the cemetery of Sarajevo. Now, we can see bullet holes, and you can see <clears throat> the, again, reminders of the war. And this slide here is another reminder, a reminder of how it used to be before, how women used to dress, how actually Sarajevo, this is in Sarajevo, in the capital. This is in Sarajevo, in the capital. They used to basically wear full burqa. And it is something that is unimaginable nowadays in Bosnia or in Yugoslavia or in the Balkans. I have never seen a woman dressed like this in the Balkan uh, Peninsula. So this used to be Ottoman, during Ottoman time, the norm. It used to be the norm. And this specific slide is actually taken in Mostar. Mostar is another big city which was, heavily, was also heavily bombarded by the Serbs. And the Serbs on purpose bombarded monuments that reminded you of Ottoman presence, like bridges which were built under Ottoman rule, like madrasas, like mosques, of course, just to make a point. Again, it was a psychological warfare. It was not something that, you know, it, it, it served their purpose. The, the Serbs wanted to make a point. And as it was said in, during the war, you could hear clearly them saying, basically, let the Turks go back to where they came from. Let the Turks go back to where they came from. Now, these people are not Turks. These people are Bosnian citizens. You got these people are Slavic people who accepted Islam like many of my ancestors ac accepted Islam and they were not Turks either. We will come to the sad point of Greece and Turkey going through a phase of transition, going through a phase of exchange of population as they call it in 1923. But this is something we'll discuss inshallah in the other episodes. Now, Bosnia should make you think why I'm showing these slides? For one important reason, I think. The Islamic heritage is there. There is a lot to discover still in Sarajevo. There is a lot to see. And don't forget, Sarajevo also has a lot of synagogues, which again indicates that the Jews, during the time of the Ottomans, as we actually have seen in the other episodes, during the time of the Ottomans, the Jews were flourishing. Jewish culture was flourishing. And there was no doubt that Sarajevo was a multicultural city that time. Now the Europeans are trying to tell us, let's embrace multiculturalism. Now, we as Muslims had embraced multiculturalism, and us, during the Ottoman Empire, we were already multicultural long before the French and the, and the Germans and the British people came to tell us that we have to embrace multiculturalism now. Under Ottoman rule, there were so many different peoples, so many different faiths, so many different cultures living and thriving. They were, their cultures were there, and they survived until today, until today. And we can clearly see that. The structures indicate, and their, their, their presence, is, everything is, is there. Sadly, many things were destroyed after the independence of the, the, the form of the Ottoman, uh, after the Ottoman Empire got destroyed and the Balkan countries became independent. But, Still, still, it's still 
possible to go and visit these countries. It's still possible to see Bosnia. It's still possible to find Islamic heritage in, in, in Kosovo. It's still possible to find Islamic heritage in Macedonia. It's still part, possible to find Islamic heritage in Bulgaria, in Albania, and in the other countries that we're going to see too, inshallah. Now, towards the end of the episode, some general facts. Serbia is a country nowadays which has a population of seven and a half million people. It used to be a country which, of course, included also Kosovo and Montenegro and the others, so that, of course, pushed up the Muslim population of Serbia that time. But nowadays we're talking about Serbia as it is, so the Muslims in Serbia are not more than three to four percent. Three and a half to four percent official statistics. But there are still Muslims in Serbia, and there is a masjid in Belgrade, there is a mosque in the center of Serbia, of the capital in Belgrade, and this tiny mosque still functions, so Muslims still can go and worship in that mosque. Now, it is a very interesting case that we still have this in Belgrade, in Serbia. And we know, we just discussed the issue of how much hatred there was, or there is, towards the Muslims in this, this, that part of the world. So, Serbia, seven and a half million people, Belgrade, the capital, still Muslim population, three to four percent, still a functioning mosque in the center of Belgrade. Okay? And this is a very, very important point why I wanted to mention Serbia at the end. I wanted you just to contemplate, to actually see that, hey, whatever happened, now the Serbs are try, were trying to eradicate the Muslims. Still, they could not eradicate them. They could not get rid of them all the way. Still, they do have a tiny minority, but still, it's a minority that a Muslim minority is still living in their country. Belgrade has still an Islamic center or a small um, mosque which is still open for worship. Um, it's impossible, it's impossible to eradicate Islam. As much as certain people and certain peoples are trying to eradicate Islam, it's just simply they have to realize that it's impossible. Jazakum la khair. I would like to thank you for this episode and hopefully I will see you in the next inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are the Muslim Ummah And each day that goes by The harder we try In gratitude we pray to Allah Chosen as part of the best of mankind We spread the word of Islam each man at each hour In all of his power Each flower, each tree Everything that we see Spread the word, O oh man Spread the word of Islam Oh, fortunate one Paradise must be won.